Hey everybody, Jason Creel here, and this is the Lawn Care Life. Today I want to talk to you about my Ground Logic Pathfinder Ride On Spreader Sprayer and give you an update on it. I've had it for just over 200 hours of use, and after that amount of time, I can kind of share with you some of the pros and cons. And, and give you some feedback on this particular machine if you're looking at in the, the, the market for a ride-on spreader sprayer. So let me show you the machine and talk to you about some of the things I like and maybe some of the things that I think they can improve on with this particular machine. Okay, so here it is. This is the Ground Logic Pathfinder. Now, since I bought this machine, you can see here it has the, the Ground Logic uh, logo on it since I bought it the company has been sold to Briggs and Stratton and now this machine is branded under the Ferris label so you're gonna see the same machine or virtually the same machine but it's just gonna have a Ferris sticker on the front of it so uh, anyway just an update there but this is the the Pathfinder and this one has um, the the hopper on it I believe is a hundred pound hopper there's the Pathfinder XC which I believe stands for extra capacity. So it has a bigger hopper. I'm not sure, I think like 150 pounds or so, but I chose the one with the smaller hopper on it. Somebody asked me about that the other day. Why, you know, what would I get the one with the smaller hopper or the larger hopper? I think, you know, rarely just doing residential properties are you gonna need more than two bags of fertilizer in the hopper at a time. And that's what this one will hold. And you can always ride back and refill. But the other thing is, you know, the more weight you put in there, even when I put two bags in there versus one bag, it becomes a little bit more difficult to handle. So, um, you know, if you're doing really large, flat properties, then, I could see the, the extra capacity being a better option for you. It's not that much difference in the price, but for me, uh, I just went with the smaller one. So, so you can see here on my hour meter, I've got 202.5 hours. And I feel like I've gotten uh, used to the machine pretty well after that. I, I've uh, also had a permagreen, and I like that machine as well. The, one of the things I like about this machine, it has a spiker hopper on it, which I like the way uh, the pattern throws on that particular hopper. Some of the positives for this machine is one, ability to handle on hills. In my opinion, it performs really well on hills. I like the easy access to the spray tank here, you know, as far as filling it up. This one doesn't have any agitation. Now for me, I'm almost exclusively using this for the granular option. Now it has the ability to spray and it sprays at a quart per thousand square feet, but I rarely uh, use the spraying capability as far as like blanketing a yard. I, I use it when I'm out there fertilizing. I might have something mixed in there that I can spot treat a weed while I'm riding. I can spray a spot, but I, I rarely um, use it for that. But it is good, you know, if I end up in a situation where I have to cover a lot of area, uh, for example, if I've got army worms on a lawn, I can mix up a pesticide in here and be able to cover that really quickly. But most of the time, I'm just using it for grain there. Now, I use my spray tank when I'm blanking in the yard with a pre-emergent or post-emergent application. Again, this one not having the agitation there, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to keep stuff mixed up properly when you're mixing multiple products in the tank. Uh, there are some other machines out there, you know, Ferris, I know, just came out with a new one. Skag come out with a, a new ride-on spreader sprayer. You got the X-Mark machines, you got uh, Steel Green, you got the Z-Spray that uh, X-Mark acquired. So, you know, there, there's other options that are going to have um, the agitation in the tank if you're using them. You know, some people use a machine like this almost, sometimes people use their ride-on machine for almost every application. And if you're doing that, you might want to look at something that has the agitation in the tank. I like this one because it's rackable. Uh, it's smaller, it can fit through a 36 inch gate. And again, with me using mostly for grain there options, I didn't want to pull a trailer and being able to put it on the rack on the back of my truck makes it easy is really convenient it took me a little while to get used to this one uh, i would describe it when comparing it with the permagreen again i think they're both good machines and similar in a lot of ways this one is more footwork and the permagreen is more hand hand controlled so on the permagreen your, your brakes are up by your handlebars this one you've got this foot pedal that you use for brakes uh, it does have an emergency brake down here um, so it took me a little while to get used to that, but I really like the way this machine handles as far as being able to turn. It's got a good turning radius on it. I think that's a positive. As far as the negatives, I think, you know, with all these machines, 
that that you're putting out fertilizer i sometimes question how long they'll last and it's nothing against the machine it's just the corrosive nature of fertilizer so what i do is i, I really try you can see how dirty it is i mean i try to avoid putting water on this machine as much as possible so instead of you know spraying it off if i do spray i, I try to be extremely careful and to keep from getting water in any of the moving parts i try to keep stuff lubricated um, but most of the time I'm, I'm using a blower and trying to blow stuff off because you know if you got fertilizer that's you know it's up in here and you wash it off and it somehow gets in the cracks i mean they try to keep it sealed as, as best they can but it just leads to some corrosion and rust and problems like that so you know it, that's just the nature of it but i mean when you're riding compared to pushing it it's just it's great you know so i i don't regret it i'm just saying i don't know you know i know people get a lot of hours out of these things but um anyway i don't know that they're going to hold up quite as long as like a zero turn mower would the other thing on on this that i'm not crazy about and i think they could make some improvements on these uh, handles are just plastic here and this thing sometimes pops off and it's just there to hold in place i i think this could be a little bit sturdier design I, I think i had to end up replacing one of these at one time because it's just being plastic it doesn't you know it's not going to hold up too well if you accidentally hit something so anyway i think they could probably make some improvements on this but overall uh, I, I love the way it handles and the way it spreads and definitely saves my legs a lot of walking a lot of pushing of course you got just a, the small honda engine which is super reliable it's got the side deflector on here the uh that that's one thing that um i, I liked if if the side deflector could be you know the the control to lower it was up here near your hands that would be a little bit more convenient the way it is now you have to sort of hang on with one hand and drop this you know and, and it you almost have to stop to do it's hard to do that while you're still moving because you gotta you know reach down here lower so it would be more convenient if there was a control for that up here again just my feedback on the machine but somebody asked me the other day if i if i was getting a new machine would i get another one of these and i told them you know i think i probably would i mean one there's just some familiarity with it once you get comfortable on something that's just what it, it takes a while to learn a new machine i think it's a good machine and sure beats pushing a spreader especially on large properties and to be honest i'd trust this more on a hill than i would a push spreader it's a little bit easier to handle and obviously you want to be careful on hills i'm just saying it does perform well on hills the price on these i think is a little over eight thousand dollars if you don't get the spraying capability then you're looking more like five thousand uh, a little over five thousand dollars i'm not sure of the exact price so you know to decide how much you're going to be spraying with it is it worth the extra twenty five hundred three thousand dollars whatever it is to get the spraying capability i went ahead and got it on this one uh, and I do use it. I don't use it a lot, but it is convenient when you need it and to be, have that ability to be able to, to spray a yard and fertilize at the same time if need be. You see here what the machine looks like when you got it racked on the truck. These are good racks. I bought, uh, I think, three of them from from B, &B Technologies, a company in Nebraska that makes these right on spreader sprayer racks. I know they've got them for different machines, but some of the larger machines are probably going to have a hard time finding a rack that you can carry those on. You're going to need a trailer or... Um, some of the companies now make the trucks where you can pull the sprayer right up on the back of the truck and that would also be an awesome option. Let me mention quickly the Lawn Care Life Conference coming up January 23rd and 24th of 2020. It's presented by Jobber. It's going to be Springville, Alabama, just north of Birmingham. You can go to LawnCareLife.com to register for the event. We've got Keith Calpas, Brian Shane, Alan Hain, and others coming to the event and look forward to that. Let me hear your thoughts on the Rhino spreader sprayers. Which ones do you like? Have you used the Ground Logic slash Ferris machine, or if you got another one that you prefer? I'd love to hear your comments or questions about that. I'm Jason Creel. If you hadn't done so, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you later. Bye.